classic. So good, David Pollock. We're jamming out over here. How we doing? So good to be back. I mean, yeah. isn't, it, isn't it true, though, with football being back, colors are brighter, the food tastes better, life yeah. is just better. That's true. Oh, for That's true. sure, That's for true. sure. And I know we had a few games, but it feels like it officially kicks off tonight when we have the national champion Clemson Tigers on the field against Georgia Tech. Uh, we'll get to those games in a moment, though, David, but I want to start with a huge injury. So according to ESPN, multiple reports, Alabama star linebacker Dylan Moses suffered a torn ACL in practice could miss the season. Talk to me. You are a defensive star at Georgia. How much will Alabama miss Moses? It's the most important player on their defense. Um, it's the guy in the middle that can cover sideline to sideline. Um, he's just he's their best player, and he's the best linebacker that Alabama's had in a while. That's saying something. That shows you how good this guy is. He's he's a modern-day perfect spread linebacker, and he would have wreaked havoc on everybody, the team's leading tackler. And here's why it's even more significant, Molly. It's not like this is the only injury they've dealt with. They've already lost another linebacker for the season. So they've already had one transfer out. They're – So, again, I'm not going to cry for Alabama. We know their depth is amazing, and they've got five-star recruits, Palooza. But now you're not even into the season. You're already going, you know, deep in the well in the depth chart. So monitor throughout the season and see more injuries come. But this is a huge blow for the Tigers. You know, David, i got to ask you this question. When we look at this particular injury to Moses, is is it one of those situations where you can literally look at that and say not only could it cost them a national championship, it could cost them the SEC title because of Georgia? Is he that significant? Yeah. I, I think so. Now, listen, everybody's going to have their opinions, but I think that even with this injury, he's going to be a top 15, top 20 pick in the NFL draft. And you can't replace a guy that can move like that, that has instincts like that, that's that good. You just you can't replace it. And here's the thing. Don't tell me you're just going to plug in another five-star guy. Football is a game of thinking. I, I know y'all think at home people think we're just a bunch of big, dumb animals, which I am, but these guys have to <laughs> – think and no personnel groupings and no uh, backfield sets and formations so you can get in the right play. If you're going to beat Trevor Lawrence and you're going to beat Jake Fromm, you have to have these kind of guys in the middle of your defense. I think it's a it's a huge blow. It, it can't be replaced by Alabama. Can, can Tua continue to put up huge numbers and outscore people? Sure. But when you play Trevor Lawrence and you play Jake Fromm and you need stops because you're not going to score every single possession, this is going to come back into play 100%. Wait, did Stephen A. just ask a former standout Georgia linebacker, whether a linebacker missing on Alabama could affect the fortunes of Georgia football. <laughs> but, you know, even with even with a fully loaded squad, they're second. And, like, you know, Clemson is on the rise. And given Trevor Lawrence's freshman season, where he didn't just beat Alabama, he spanked them. If they are, at, even were they at full steam, you think they could beat Clemson? They can. They, they can. First of all, start with Trevor. I, I, since I've been doing this job for about 10 years, I've never seen a freshman come in and I look at the guy after one season and go, if he left right now, he's the number one pick in the NFL draft. I've never seen that. He's got, he's got huge size at 6'4", 6'5", you know, 230. He's a really mobile athlete. He doesn't look like it's, it's not as fast as, you know, Mike Vick and those guys you've seen, but he's a, he's a fast, athletic kid that can move, that can make every throw in the world. I mean, he literally has more arm talent than everybody in college football, but also has shown touch, also has shown the ability to read defenses. So, I mean, it, listen, Alabama and Tua and their offense is as good as it gets. They're going to rival Clemson. They're going to be right there with them, tick for tack. Let's not forget, Clemson's reloading completely on defense. And it's one thing to replace Farrell. It's another thing to replace Farrell, Wilkins, and Lawrence, all these guys. So mm. they're going to take – I think they, they'll take a step back defensively, but their firepower on offense yeah. is also going to take a step forward because Lawrence is surrounded by a bunch of Ferraris. Listen, and listen, it's always good to see elite teams, and there's no question that Clemson and Alabama uh, belong being ranked where they are. But if you've got you got millions of people out there that want that apple cart interrupted – some degree or what have you. I mean, who's the team we should be looking at at, on the outside of Clemson, of Alabama, and say, excuse me, these guys are who you need to watch out for. Oklahoma's been knocking on the door the last couple of years with Lincoln Riley. They got Jalen Hurts now. Obviously, you got Georgia there. People are questioning whether or not Jim Harbaugh is going to be able to do something. Ryan Day is at Ohio State. Who are you looking at? Who are you thinking 
I think it's Georgia. And, and listen, it's not it, – Georgia's been there the last two years, you know, with Alabama. And they've led for all – in the last two matchups with these guys, one being the national championship, one being the SC championship, they've led for almost the entire game minus like 64 seconds total in two games. So they've been there. This is Kirby's by far most talented team. And the difference between – I think the one thing that can make Georgia special compared to what it used to be, it's going to be ridiculous on offense. Jake Fromm's back. Their offensive line is the best offensive line in the country, hands down. Running back spots loaded. Defense is different this year. Here's why they're different. I think they got three or four guys that can rush the passer. And if if some of these young cats like Uzi on the outside and Jermaine Johnson and, and all these guys that they've recruited can come in I, and be the players that they're supposed to be and watching those guys, you got guys that can rush the quarterback and make life hard on two, make hard, life hard on Lawrence. I don't see another team in college football that – athletically can line up on the field and go toe-to-toe with Clemson and Alabama, Georgia looks just like them. And now the, the to me, it comes down to one thing. Is Jake Fromm going to be able to get in a duel with those two cats? Because Tua and Lawrence are special. They, they have special ability, special escapability, and, and they have magic. Can Fromm be that guy that has that magic and make big plays for two halves? He's had yeah, a great right. first he has half done the last it. two years against mm-hmm. Alabama. He's great halves, but he, he hasn't has done finished it. and adjusted to when, when they fixed when they adjusted, he hadn't been able to fix it and adjust on his side. David, um, Paul Feinbaum was on the show yesterday, and we mm-hmm. were talking about delusional fan bases, as Stephen A. talks about the Cowboys fan base. <laughs> Fan bases who, like, they have good programs and stuff, but they think of themselves out of whack with the reality. Michigan, Tennessee, some others come to mind. Maybe a lightning rod uh, situation is Notre Dame, year in and year out, right? A huge national following um, and really good team. They are in the bottom half of the top ten this season. But what are the odds that they make it back to the college football playoff? I would say not good, and and, and week four kind of tells you a lot about it too, because they got to go to they got to go to Athens and play Georgia, who, you know, we're sitting up here talking about it. We're talking about Clemson and, and, and Alabama first, and then Georgia's that next team on the cusp. So I think that's that's a spot for them. When, when you look at Notre Dame, I think they're really talented defensively. I think they're going to be really good. You start talking about trios at safety and pass rush, they got some guys that can really make life hard. Ian Book has to retool his weapons now. He has to find some guys on the outside. He has to find the running back spot and get that solidified. I think Notre Dame's going to be a really good team. Here's the one thing we've seen about Brian Kelly. They do a great job regardless. They kind of know who they are most every single year, and they're always going to be hyper-competitive. I just don't expect Notre Dame to be undefeated and in the college football playoff again this season. Last question real quick. Justin Herbert is one of those guys that everybody's looking at projecting to be a high draft pick in this upcoming NFL draft, uh, next year's NFL draft. Talk to me about what your expectations are of him this year. We've been talking about Trevor Lawrence. How good is this guy? Should we be paying more attention to him? He, he has the talent, Steve A. Smith. I'm just telling you, last year when I went to the Oregon-Stanford game and I'm watching him warm up and throw the ball, I'm like, good God. He could throw it to a car wash and not get it wet. I mean, he's got the skill. And, he, and he's 6'4", 6'5", 230, can run like a deer. Here's the thing, and to put it in your world, Stephen A., with basketball, he's got to make free throws, man. He consistently misses open guys that he needs to connect on to move the sticks. His, he's, got all the, he's got all the goods, and when you watch him, you love seeing him. He's got to be more accurate with the football. He's got to be more consistent. He can't miss those easier throws that are there for the taking that get you another first down, which now you get the tempo and go fast and, and wears people out. So the potential is off the charts, off the chains. Week one. We're going to see it out the gate because he's going to get harassed by Auburn's defensive line. You'll see his athletic ability. If he hasn't improved and gotten a little bit more accurate, I think he'll be the same guy you saw last year. That's it's why he's going to give you flashes college. of mm-hmm. wow. But then, then he was a presumptive back and he heading goes, in, looks human. Heading into last season, he was going to be the presumptive number one overall pick potentially, potentially. And he's still in college because of what you just mentioned, Herbert. Yeah, he looks good. He looks he looks as good coming off the bus, man, as anybody in college football. He looks. Mm-hmm. He looks like Trevor Lawrence, and he's got that kind of arm talent. He's just got to continue yeah. to develop and grow. And Accuracy. senior year, I mean, this is a good chance. Yeah. You know who looks good coming off the bus? The college game day crew. The crew is back. You got one of the best gigs in the business, you David. Guys are great. Always a great. lot of fun. Love watching you on Saturday yep. mornings. I know it's going to kick off earlier this year, but uh, thank you so much for hanging with us, and we'll be watching you. Great to, great great to be back on with you guys. Back. All right. Okay, no question. Uh, still to come, there's been some bold NFL. 